thank you so much what an amazing event event we all have come together for what an amazing learning lessons and more importantly stories yeah you know there was once there was a duckling she laid eggs and one of the eggs seemed little different it was little dark not like the other eggs she said it looks yucky as the time proceeded the chickens the ducks came out of it but this duck was little different it was little bit yellowish to say little bit whitish and and it grew differently from other ducks and it started growing up all the eggs they started becoming ducks this duck was actually a little black and it was ridiculed not only for weeks but months the duck was going through really rough time yeah almost lost hope and faith in itself and one day across the pond he sees a group of swans swimming across something happens inside he said wow what an amazing view i love these people and then he looks at the water and is mesmerized because is not a duck is actually a swan now you might have heard this ugly duckling story in your childhood but how relevant is it now we are talking about the world needs you but the world needs more is your authentic story i remember on we had our first meeting on 3rd june with chat and some of us and chat again a visionary who said why not let's do something which will impact world in its own way and that has become a story for all of us this is how we all came together listening to and i'm i'm so grateful i'm here because i've been listening the stories after stories after stories from the start of this summit the stories by claire how do you move away from clutter to get a clarity the stories by devi how what are the six tips that you can apply and how she has applied and the powerhouse bobby wow i was like yo i should make a note of all the stories and isn't isn't that what we are looking for in the world if we talk about let me start off with my own story because it won't make sense if i don't tell my stories i give a little bit about it earlier imagine this it's a small town of india 1994 i'm on the roof of my house where we we'll live close to an airport around 25 30 kilometers and there are these planes flying and what happens when the plane flies you get this white smoke coming out typically my sister is next to me and and she says what is that brother I said you see those are the white smoke that comes out of the aeroplane when they fly and then i said something bold which at that time i took it very lightly <clears throat> but change i said you know what one day i will be traveling in those planes now remind me we are from a very humble background we by that time i hadn't even boarded a train if i remember correctly but just making that bold move the saying out loud to her you know what one day i'll be traveling in those planes and today i can probably say that i've traveled more than 50000 air miles this is my third international assignment and it's not about me it's about the dreams the dreams of 
whether you are from small town, whether you are from big town. What does that make you feel? Stories. When we talk about story, that is one skill that can change the way people look at you. Story can change or convert the critics to your craving, raving fa fans. Absolutely. Stories create emotions. You know, uh, Michael Jackson once wore a red color jacket. And then when he died, it was auctioned. And it was sold for the biggest bidder who bought it for $1.5 million. This was the kind of jacket that you can get in 50 dollars, 100 pounds, not more than that. And there was this person who was really curious, why is it that this jacket somebody can buy for $1.5 million? Somebody said, oh, maybe it's because of the Michael stories. And he got really curious. He went to eBay and he ordered one item. You know, we all know about eBay, you get a lot of things. Bought some weird item. One of them was a pink horse. And he called up one of the script writer. He said, you know, man, I'm trying to do this experiment. Uh, I've got this object. Would you like to write a story? The storyteller was intrigued. He said, yeah, let's do it. And then he did it for 99 more items. Can you imagine that 100 items? They were bought for $129. And if we talk about that pink horse, the one pink horse, which was bought for 99 cent was actually sold for, drum rolls, $63.58. If we do a little bit of math, that's a gain of 6,358%. And that's not, that's only one object. If we take that, Total $129 objects, 100 objects, they were sold for $8,000. That's the impact of stories. We can learn to tell story and this is so relevant. Right? Many of us feel that, oh wow, Steve Jobs, how many of you do not know Steve Jobs? Because I shouldn't ask this question. How many of you know Steve Jobs? All of us know Steve Jobs, right? Do you think his primary job was to do innovation or creativity? He was a master storyteller. When he spoke from the stages, launching iPhone and iPad, he didn't talk about the microprocessor or the, the switch or the buttons. He talked about the stories. How is this is gonna impact your world? How is this gonna change your world? You now there was this amazing study done. Uh, they were launching a new iPhone and there were lines for a mile or so. And they went towards the end of the line and they asked the guy, all right, why are you in the line? I'm here to buy iPhone. Why are you buying iPhone? I don't know how, but I think the iPhone is going to change my life. That's the narrative that has been built in them because of the stories that have been told about them. Let's not go too far. We have somebody here who just spoke about her upcoming book, One to One, Clear. And I do want to talk about that because how amazing is that? You're having a story bank and I know Claire has close to 200 stories 
when you have that power i think she's like a superwoman having all the stories around her and like yeah sh- sh- stories yeah wherever claire goes there will be stories flowing around what she is master is the art of collecting stories and then she's going to release that for those people who join my workshop i do ask them to actually do collect their stories right now a lot of people think that storytelling is a new hot skills something that has been there for for only few weeks few months few years but let's take back to the history before we had this amazing black devices called phone before that we had books before that we had carvings on the stones but even before that when we were ape men we were in caves what was with us stories our our cavemen our ancestor forefathers will go out for two things number 1 to survive they don't want to be hunted and become breakfast lunch or dinner of any predators out there and number 2 to thrive which is to get food for themselves in form of hunting themselves hunting other animals and for their families and once they get that in the cave they discovered fire and they started sitting around the fire that time there was no ppt no charts no graph they had only stories to tell that was the only mechanism of information flow and that's the reason we are we are hard wired to listen to story if i tell you data after data or or show you lot of graphics and lot of graphs you might like it for a few seconds probably for a few minute but after a few minutes you will feel dry but if i tell you which is what bobby did today amazing job of stories after stories after stories you'll be fired up you'll be like yes bring it more i was like i was going to type bobby don't worry about timing please keep saying things whatever stories you are telling absolutely devi stories makes our content so engaging now our brain has got conscious part subconscious part but there is also a very important part which is called limbic side of brain the smallest part of the brain but most important because that part of the brain is the decision maker brain is it the part of the brain we say yeah let's do this or let's not do this and they've actually done some research where someone's limbic side of brain was not working that person was doing very well just that that person couldn't take any decision and what does story tell do storytelling do is directly reach out to the limbic side of the brain and that's the reason if you're trying to sell somebody if you're trying to you know propose to somebody if you're trying to do a campaign when you add a story a captivating stories we all say yes let's do it there's all of also lot of and there's this term by a gentleman called david jp philips is a master master storyteller and he said this is called a cocktail of angels which is basically when you hear amazing story you have five different hormones that secretes including oxytocin serotonin dopamine endorphin and testosterone so why i'm telling you all of this why do you need to know all of this and which is where i want to bring us back to where we are you know for those who know who are in uk know that and for those who do not know next few days is supposed to be the hottest ever day in uk probably the for the first time in the history 
UK temperature is going to touch 40 degrees centigrade. We're going to build some story. We're going to create some story. But what's most important is what are the stories that we're telling to the world? You know, one of the reasons that global warming is not taking up is because there is lack of bright stories. The reason Malala became so popular or Greta Thunberg, for example, is not because of the facts or figures or the vocal variety that they bring. It's because of the stories. I believe all of us have a unique story. My story is my story. Your story is your story. Every one of us have a unique story. And what we need to do is go out there, tell to the world, what is it that we stand for? What is it that we care for? And why is it so important for us to come together? Whether it's the world needs you submit or otherwise, again, because we see a lot of news of what's happening in the world, a lot of negativity but we need to be the ambassador of change. And our prime tool for that would be, can you guess? Stories. Our stories, that's right. When you tell your stories, you're authentic, you're vulnerable. I loved Devi when Devi said, you don't have to be perfectionist. You have to be progressionist. We all need to progress toward but you need to be authentic. You need to be vulnerable. If I, if I stop sharing about my background from the, from the place, from the country, from the language that I come from, I'm doing an injustice. Injustice to myself, injustice to my community, injustice to my religion as well. What I want all of you to do after this talk is Maybe take out five more minutes, apart from Claire's 15 minutes, take five more minutes and think about your stories. Think about your journey. And this is this beautiful exercise. I, I just recently got a book from one of my idols, Darren Lacroix, and he says that, no, if you have to tell a story to either your kid, grandkid, or a eight year old version of yourself, what would you tell? Would you tell that I, uh, I didn't do anything? I didn't tell my stories. I, I was not proud of what my background, what my ethics, what my preferences are, or I was bold like Bobby, like Claire, like Chad, like Taiba, like Devi, went out there fearlessly and told my stories. Not because I'm great, not because I'm grand, not because I'm amazing, because someone out there is waiting to hear that. When I wrote my book, I didn't know it's gonna be a bestseller or something. My only purpose was that if one person can change 1%, all this is worth it. So I want you to all go back, think about your stories. And this, we are filled with story. Our life has been an amazing story. Collect those stories and more importantly, spread it across mm -hmm. through these summits, through your books, through the people you touch in your life. That, wouldn't that be an amazing word? Go out there, do that, do it for you do it for the world because the world needs you and your story over to you david